In this video, I'd like to talk about increasing the security of your backyard fence to keep your pooch from getting out of the yard. In my fence, I have a series of holes cut. This is so the dog can see out into the front yard. It greatly enhances the enjoyment that the dog gets out of being in the backyard. To ensure nothing goes through these holes, I've covered each one of them with plexiglass. Up to now, this has always worked very well for me. In my security camera, you can see Babaroo. One day, Babaroo decided he wanted to go play with the dog next door. Apparently, he had no problem busting that plexiglass out, then pretending he was a kangaroo instead of a dog. Here we see him headed next door to play with the other dog. My fix for this little problem is I put up bars. Yes, Babaroo, you do the crime, you pay the time. In this video, I'll show you how to build these bars. The first thing we need to do, measure and get the dimensions of each of the windows. We're going to use these dimensions to build these wood frames. Go to your chop saw and set it to cut a 45 degree angle. I'm using a 2x2 two two piece of dimensional lumber. We start out by making a 45 degree cut in the board. Remember those measurements you made at your window? Transfer them over to the short end of the board. This will ensure the inside of this frame is exactly the same size as your window. Now you can cut another 45 degree angle on that mark you just made. Pay careful attention to the direction of the 45 degree cuts. You want to ensure they're going in opposite directions. Flip your 2x2 two two over and use the board you just cut out as a template to cut a second side. After you've cut out all four pieces, this is how they'll fit together. All the short sides will be on the inside of the frame. For assembly, I like to use a really heavy piece of steel mounted on the corner of my workbench. It makes using the wood clamps a lot easier. Plus, I also know that steel is perfectly flat, so I know there will be no bows or warps in my project. Line the first two sides up using a square and clamp them into place. I'm going to be using a 3 inch wood screw. To avoid splitting the wood, pre-drill the hole. Before you put the screw in, you have to be sure that you countersink the hole. The tapered head of the wood screw will act like a splitting wedge and split your wood. While installing the screw, you want it to be snug but not overly tight. The reason for this is, snug will give you square corners. Whereas, if you tighten the screw too much, it'll pull your corner out of alignment and make it look like this. Finish assembling your frame, putting one screw in each corner. Now that the frames are made, we can install the bars. We will be installing two bars into each frame. The math to figure out the spacing on the bars is extremely simple. First, we measure the area we have to work with. In this case, it's 8 inches. So we have a frame. We want to install two bars, which means there's going to be three spaces that we have to calculate. You simply take the total distance of 8 inches and divide it into three equal spaces. This will give you 2.66 inches. Break out your calipers and mark the frame. We need to drill some holes on the inside of these frames. So pull out the screws that are holding them together. Don't worry, the screws go back in very easily later. To figure out how deep to drill the holes, figure out how thick your wood is. Divide that in half and make marks on your wood. Now you can measure between the two marks to figure out how long each metal rod will be. You can either cut the metal rod with a cutoff wheel, or since it's only a quarter inch rod, it's much easier just to use a pair of bolt cutters. Notice my little hoodlum supervising me? Now grab a quarter inch drill bit, or if all your drill bits are thrown in a drawer, like a lot of mine, a pair of calipers on the shaft will show you that this one is a quarter inch bit. We're going to set the drill press to only drill down to the halfway point. This is usually accomplished with a screw and nut arrangement. Where the nut is on the screw determines how deeply you can drill. Drill identical holes in the top and bottom of your frame. When you go to assemble and the parts don't fit, usually it's one of two things causing it. 
The first thing is, your steel may be mushroomed at the end. This problem is easily taken care of with this item called a flap disc. It's basically sandpaper for steel. The second item that can be causing this problem is, I'm using hot rolled steel. This type of steel doesn't always have the correct dimensions. So use the flap disc to gently grind down the diameter of the steel rod just a little bit. Once you've done this, assembly will be much easier. And additionally, once the wood gets wet, because this is outdoors after all, it will swell and it will pinch that steel rod in there tightly. Reinstall your frame's four screws. Remember, don't torque them down too tightly. Cover your steel with a layer of paint to protect it. Then stain your frame whatever color you feel like. I'm going to go with black. Clamp your frame into place to hold it. Then install screws all the way around the perimeter on the other side of the fence. As far as which direction I ran the steel bars, there's two reasons why I ran them vertically. One, I think it actually looks better. And two, the dog can't really get his paws on it to try to pull on them because his paws go up and down, not side to side. And there you have it. Your pooch will no longer decide he's going to go over and play with the neighbors when you're not home.